at the first message of support. When I started to think of the future, looking at my son Muhammad, who was 12 years old, what is he going to do? How can he run his life after he lost his mom, his sisters? But the message of passion and support came from the mouth of Muhammad to tell me, why are you crying? Why are you screaming? I was surprised. What is he saying? He said to me, you must be happy that my sisters are happy there. They are with their mom. She asked for them. Those are our children. Can we learn from them who are becoming mature beyond their age? I said, I have to move forward and to think as usual of saving lives because life is like riding a bicycle. To keep balanced, we must keep moving. And as a medical doctor, I know I can't return my daughters, but I want to focus to save Shada that I wanted her to live and to see, not to be blind or disabled. It was God's bless. At the same time of shilling the house, I was supposed to be interviewed live by Channel 10 Israeli TV. And this secret of a craziness must be disclosed. I called my friend, Shlomi Eldar, who opened the speaker to allow the humanity to see what is happening against other human beings, to disclose the secret of a craziness that innocent civilians are paying the price. It opened the eyes of the Israeli public, the international community, the Palestinians, about the size of the tragedy. My daughter, niece, and the brother were referred to the hospital where I used to work. Just two days before the war, I came from my work. In the hospital, they saved my daughter Shada, niece and the brother. And that's what do we need to realize, to focus on saving lives. Saving one's life, you save the world. Killing one is killing the world. And that's what is needed from each of us. When we see someone is killed, to stand up of rejecting it, and stopping it, not just to watch. It's good to be moved, but it's a matter of action to stop it in this world. That's what is needed. They saved them. And what is needed to practice, what do we practice within the borders of the hospital? when we treat all as a human being. And that's what do we need outside to transmit the message of medicine and health care outside the borders of the hospital. Saving life is my mission in life as a medical doctor. The happiest moment in my life when I handle a baby to his mother. Or a woman to come struggling to get pregnant to tell me a pregnancy test is positive. It's time for each of us to give. It's good that we are meeting here. 
but we are not connected. We are not attached to each other. We as a human being, we were created from Adam and Eve and became nations and the tribes for what? To know each other. But sorry to say, we don't know each other. We are not connected with each other. It's important to know what do we call the other who is a human being as I am. There is a Palestinian nation and an Israeli nation and the humanity with which we are connected. And we all were born free. And there is no price to get our freedom. I must not pay anything or to sacrifice my life to get my freedom. The most holy thing in the universe is a human being and the freedom. A freedom is a free for all, not to be oppressed or occupied or suppressed. Freedom of sickness, of poverty, of unemployment, of living free in this world and expressing yourself like others. And then someone may ask, after what did you suffer? Why you didn't hate? I can say, to hate whom? And is it the right way to hate? My daughters, souls, it was holy and noble, be sad alone. <laughs> that she was a special world, who was a 20 years old. Always talking to me, telling me, keep our souls and the blood holy and noble, and they bring us justice. Hate will never bring them justice or revenge. Wisdom and success are the antidote of hate and revenge. I can't treat hate with hate, darkness with darkness. The antidote is success. My daughter, Shada, who lost the sight in her eye? And her fingers. But she didn't lose the compass. What did she suffer in one year? I think mountains can't bear it. She was in the high school. She was studying day and night during the war to be one of the first ten in Palestine in the high school. What do I expect from her now after what happened? But she was determined to succeed and to challenge those who tried to make her blind. She did the exam. And the day I moved to Canada with the work permit to work, and I was supposed to go there before the war. But I said, till my children finish their exams, she succeeded 96%. And she is studying computer engineering at the University of Toronto. Those are our children. Bisan was the first Palestinian girl that I sent for a creativity for peace camp to be combatant fighter for peace and the humanity and to know others. And when she came back, she told me, I found how similar are we. Bisan, at the age of 14, said, to meet terrorism with terrorism or violence with violence doesn't solve any problem. Bisan said, everything starts small, then becomes big. Everything starts in one place, 
then goes in different directions. Can we learn from our children? Can we adopt their ideas and work for them? I can say it's good that we are meeting. Meeting and listening is good, but it's a matter of action. What can we do? The patient doesn't need words. He needs treatment and the prescription to be cured and healed. And the change will never happen unless we started the change within each of us and inside us. The disease is in our hearts and minds. God will never change what is in people till they change what is in their hearts, souls, and minds. That's what is needed to act and to do something. Don't underestimate your action, but to start to do something with your neighbors, with your community, to read, to know. Don't take anything for granted.